Before we begin, let me tell you that you can find a lot of videos about adventure games in my channel, like the full history of Quest for Glory, Space Quest, King's Quest, Gabriel Knight and more, and a two-hour documentary on the history of the genre with the rise and fall of the adventure games. If you like the content of my channel, please consider supporting it by subscribing and turning on the notifications for it. You can also consider supporting me by becoming a member of my YouTube channel. There is one membership tier and you will have a lot of benefits like exclusive updates on upcoming videos, you get to watch each new video earlier, you get to decide the topic of upcoming videos and also member exclusive giveaways that will follow. The Cthulhu Mythos is a mythology or shared fictional universe based on the literary work of the writer H.P. Lovecraft. The term was created by a contemporary of Lovecraft and frequent correspondent August Derleth. It is fundamentally a collection of supernatural horror stories with its main theme being that humanity is living inside a fragile bubble of perception unaware of white lies dormant in the unknown lurking places on earth and beyond. It took its name from one of Lovecraft's best known stories, The Call of Cthulhu, which begins with the sentence The most merciful thing in the world, I think, is the inability of the human mind to correlate all its contents. In total, Lovecraft's work includes a big number of stories that evoked cosmic awe and terror through their accounts of incomprehensibly alien monsters and their horrifying incursions into our world. To summarize the whole concept of the Cthulhu mythos, humans are nothing special in the vastness of the universe. There are alien beings out there that are like gods to us, but most of them are uninterested even in our existence. However, there are some who want to bring total annihilation to our planet and lives. These are the old ones, one of them Cthulhu, who is considered a leader or a high priest of the old ones, is trapped here on earth due to a long forgotten cosmic alignment of stars. He lays dormant deep beneath the Pacific Ocean, awaiting the day the stars align once more and allow him to awaken. Even while he sleeps, he sometimes reaches out to touch the dreams of mankind, whispering into the minds of the insane and creeping through the nightmares of men. Cults of madmen and ancient tribes are dedicated to the worship of his and other gods. Other notable old ones of the mythos include Dagon, yogg sothoth Subnigorath, Azathoth and Nyarlathotep. The lesser races have a biology we cannot even hope to grasp. Some live in the far reaches of the universe capable of interstellar and multidimensional travel in search of resources and test subjects. Some even lived here on Earth long ago in the earliest stages of life on our planet and there are places where the remnants can be found hidden inside massive woods or under miles of permafrost. These beings are all interlinked along with strange alien worlds and dreamscapes, making up the mythos. Another important element of the mythos is the supposed existence of a long forgotten cursed grimoire, the Necronomicon. This book was supposedly written by the mad Arab Abdul al Hazred, and among other things, it contains an account of the old ones, their history, and the means for summoning them. The Necronomicon appears in a lot of the Cthulhu mythos stories by Lovecraft and his contemporaries. Lovecraft initially published his stories in a serialized form through pulp fiction publications that were quite popular during the early 20th century. After his death, his work was preserved by other authors that belonged to his literary circle like August Derleth who founded Arkham House to preserve it. Anthologies of his stories were published by Arkham House that contributed to the popularity of the Cthulhu mythos literature. The Cthulhu mythos has a quite prominent place among the pop culture of today with a huge number of appearances in medias like films, books, board and tabletop games. The video game industry is no exception of course as there are numerous video games released based on the Cthulhu mythos for a wide variety of platforms. In this video we will discuss the adventure games of the past and present that were based or inspired by this literature niche. 
I will try to present them in a chronological order to show the evolution of the technical aspects and the narrative itself. Of course, there are numerous adventure games with reference to the mythos, but in this video we will include only those whose entirety is based on it. Let's begin with the first ever adventure game based on the Cthulhu mythos. The Lurking Horror is an interactive fiction game released by the once great Infocom in 1987. Infocom was one of the key companies behind text adventures in the late 80s, mostly known today for its Zork franchise. The Lurking Horror was initially released for MS-DOS, Apple II, Atari ST and Commodore 64. It was later ported to the Amiga, adding sound effects. The game starts with a player trying to visit his university campus, battling a snowstorm to finish a term paper. When he arrives, the document is damaged beyond repair, but with the assistance of a hacker, he later finds out that the text has been partially replaced by text from the Department of Alchemy. The player then begins his quest to repair his tent paper only to discover a powerful evil that lurks in the campus depths. The university in the game is titled GUE Tech as an abbreviation for George Underground Edwards Institute of Technology but also as a subtle reference to Infocom's famous Zork franchise whose games are set in the Great Underground Empire. It also features some landmarks of the actual Massachusetts Institute of Technology which many members of Infocom have attended including the game's creator Dave Lebling. As was common for Infocom's releases of the time, the game's original packaging included some extras such as a student ID card, a guide for freshmen of the school including maps of the campus and buildings and background information on the school and a rubber centipede-like creature reminiscent of one one of the masters in the game. The game was very well received upon its release with some publications noting that its story resembled the work of Stephen King other than being based on Lovecraft's literature. Even though it is mostly text based, it is included in multiple lists of the scariest games ever. The Hound of Shadow is a text adventure game published by Electronic Arts in 1989 for the Amiga Atari ST and MS-DOS. It was developed by Eldritch Games as the first game in a planned series of linked games where the players would have been able to migrate the main character from game to game much like the feature of the Quest for Glory series. The player can either choose out of the available characters or create one from scratch by selecting gender, occupation, skills and more. Even though there are sequels to this game such as The Daughter of Serpents and The Scroll, the initial plan of Interleague games was never fulfilled. The game starts with a main character being suddenly possessed while at a seance with a friend. He speaks using a woman's voice warning the person sitting next to him that he bears the mark of the Hound of Shadow. Both must investigate what is happening during a certain time limit and prevent a tragic end. The game takes place in London during the 1920s and even though it depicts some true historical events and characters such as Elizabeth Bathory, it is mainly inspired by the works of H.P. Lovecraft. The character generation system and the story were received positively by fans and critics but the game was not successful due to bugs and a very limited text parser. The next game in our list is a bit different as it is mostly a survival horror title. Alone in the Dark is a series of video games that evolved to become pure survival horror titles and even inspired other key franchises of the genre such as Resident Evil. However, the first game of the series has a lot of adventure-like elements, hence its appearance in this list. Alone in the Dark was released for MS-DOS in 1992 and was ported for the 3DO two years later. It was developed by the French studio Infograms that in later years acquired the rights to the Atari brand name and is known as such today. Its plot follows the story of Jeremy Hartwood, a noted artist and owner of a Louisiana mansion in 1924 who committed suicide by hanging himself inside the mansion. Even though his death seems suspicious, police rushes to close the case as Hartwood was rumored to be possessed. His niece, Emily Hartwood, an antique dealer, employs the private investigator Edward Canby to visit the mansion and locate a prized piano in the attic where she believes her uncle had hidden clues about his demise. 
the player is then prompted to choose either Emily Hartwood or Edward Canby as their character and the adventure begins with the player trapped inside the attic of the mansion. The main goal is to find a way out of the mansion while avoiding, outsmarting or defeating various supernatural enemies like zombies and giant monsters. Though able to kill most enemies with simply fists, the player character can also utilize weapons that he finds along the way. Many opponents can be beaten by solving a particular puzzle rather than a straight fight and much of the game involves exploration. The player character can search any area, open and close doors, push certain objects and pick up some items, hence the inclusion in an adventure game's list. Unlike its sequels, the game is partially non-linear. The player can explore the rooms in any order and revisit previous areas. In 1989, the game's programmer, Frederick Reynal, was working on another Infogrames project which inspired him to develop a tool for the creation and animation of 3D characters. The company's CEO, Bruno Bonnell, proposed a horror aspect in the 3D game and trade being a fan of horror films, proposed the idea of the Alone in the Dark game which began development with a working title Screams in the Dark. The game's main artist, Yael Barros, was selected after an internal contest in the company. The initial idea was to combine 3D model characters with high resolution scanned images of an actual mansion but the technical limitations of the time led to the game mixing 3D characters and pre-rendered 2D background images. During the development, the game even carried the Call of Cthulhu logo, but it was later dropped when the pen and paper game rights holder Chaosium decided not to support the project. Alone in the Dark received critical acclaim upon its release and is considered a breakthrough and influential title. It is considered a forefather of the survival horror genre and it strongly influenced Shinji Mikami's direction of the original Resident Evil game along with spawning numerous sequels in the Alone in the Dark franchise. The next game in our list is another Infogrames release and a pure point and click adventure game. Shadow of the Comet, later renamed to Call of Cthulhu Shadow of the Comet, is an adventure game developed and released by Infogrames in 1993 for the MS-DOS. The plot is set in 1910 when the British photographer and amateur astronomer John Parker visits the isolated town of Fieldsmouth in New England to photograph the passage of Halley's Comet. Parker had also discovered some papers regarding an 1834 incident when Lord Bolskin visited the same town to study some astronomical events at a location nearby where the observation of the events would have been clearer. Under unclear circumstances, the Lord is driven mad and ends up in an asylum. Parker decides to study the incident and follow up on Bolskin research. The game uses many elements from Lovecraft's The Dunwich Horror and The Shadow of Innsmouth. Even the town's name Illsmouth is a direct reference to the latter short story. The game plays like a standard third-person adventure game. Contrary to many adventure games from the early 90s, the game has a keyboard-driven interface with a system of actions activated either by pressing the corresponding key L for look, G for get, T for talk, U for use, or selecting them from a menu activated by the tab key. Typical for Infogrames titles, the game contains vector-based cutscenes with enlarged graphics of the faces of the speakers during dialogues. There is a floppy version of the game and a CD-ROM one which includes improved graphics, mouse-driven interface and full voice acting. This version also shipped with a mini-game titled Visit to the Lovecraft Museum in which the player controls a nameless visitor to a museum of the strange and unusual containing exhibits based on or inspired by H.P. Lovecraft and his work. Shadow of the Comet was received positively upon its release, with critics praising the game's plot, story and puzzles, but criticized the lack of mouse support in the initial floppy version. The success led to a sequel, even though the story in our next game is not directly linked to Shadow of the Comet. Prisoner of Ice, also known as Call of Thulu Prisoner of Ice in PAL Territories, is an adventure game developed and released by Infogrames in 1995 for the PC and Macintosh computers and later ported to Sega Saturn and the PlayStation. The game takes place during World War II primarily around Antarctica. 
A British submarine, HMS Victoria, is shown leaving the Antarctic after rescuing a Norwegian officer from a secret Nazi base. Along with him, the crew also picked up a couple of mysterious cargo crates from the base. The main character is a young US intelligence officer, Lieutenant Ryan, who is on board the HMS Victoria on a secret mission. Later in the game, the protagonist of The Shadow of the Comet, John Parker, also appears, revealing the link between the two games. Prisoner of Ice is based mainly on Lovecraft's novel At the Mountains of Madness. The game is typical of the third-person adventure games of the era. It includes solving puzzles and exploring locations through a very simplified point-and-click interface. The player can examine any item and either pick it up, use another item on it, or operate it. Some puzzles are timed and if not completed within a short span of time, usually less than a minute, it will result in a game over. However, the game auto saves before the beginning of any new timed puzzle. Along with its release, there were three French language comic books published as tie-ins to the game. Prisoner of Ice was received positively upon its release from fans and critics. It was praised for its story, setting and puzzles, but critics sans the game poor voice acting. It sold more than 30,000 units on its release day in the US alone. After Prisoner of Ice and the fall of popularity of the adventure game genre, there were not any notable Cthulhu Mythos adventure games for years. That brings us to 2007 with an adventure-like game mixing the famous character of Sherlock Holmes and the Lovecraftian universe. Sherlock Holmes The Awakened is an adventure game developed by Frogwares and published in 2007 for Microsoft Windows. Frogwares is a Ukrainian studio known for its Sherlock Holmes games and for another notable Cthulhu mythos game but of the action-adventure genre, The Sinking City of 2019. The Awakened is the third in the Sherlock Holmes series of adventure games developed by Frogwares, preceded in 2002 by Sherlock Holmes The Mystery of the Mummy and in 2004 by Sherlock Holmes The Case of the Silver Earring. The game follows an original plotline as Sherlock Holmes and his companion Dr. Watson investigate a series of strange disappearances related to the Cthulhu mythos. Set in 1910 in London, the game protagonist Sherlock Holmes and Dr. Watson investigate a mysterious kidnapping case. Soon after they initiate their investigation, they are confronted by a formidable organization that worships a primal god, Cthulhu. This bloodthirsty sect seems to be ready to do anything to carry out its mysterious work against which only the great detective has the strength to fight. The game is played from a first-person perspective, dropping the pre-rendered backgrounds of its predecessors. In the remake that followed a year later, the option for a third-person perspective was added. It features an open-world environment where the player can interact with NPCs and search for clues. The inventory system saves all objects, documents and map locations for later use and can also be used to combine objects. All conversations with characters in the game are completed through linear cutscenes. While the game does give the player a fair amount of space to move around in each area, there are cases where Holmes must move to a new area screen or change his view of the street to move where the player wants him to, but in those cases an icon will show a set of footprints to indicate the change. Regarding of the 3D environment, the game retains the point and click aspect of most adventure games, giving the player the ability to complete the game using the mouse alone. The game was met positively by fans and critics, receiving a meta score of 72. Critics praised its story, puzzles and visuals, but mentioned that the long, unskippable cutscenes are the game's main drawback. The last game in our list is an indie one, but its quality and production levels can be easily matched those of bigger studios and budgets. Gibus a Cthulhu Adventure is a point-and-click adventure game developed and published by the Romanian developer Stakinatic for Windows, Mac OS, Linux and Nintendo Switch in 2019. Detective Don Archetype is hired to find and bring back the Necronomicon that is supposed to be in Darkham. However, things don't go according to plan as he gets abducted by a mysterious cult while visiting the Miskatonic library. The librarian, Buzz Kerwan, stumbles upon the evil Tom himself and uses it, accidentally making his cat Kite to talk. He embarks on a quest to reverse the spell. The three protagonists, Don Archetype, 
Baz Kerwan and the Cat Kitte work together trying to solve the mystery of the Necronomicon. They will travel to multiple locations like the fictional towns of Darkham and Fishmouth and the real Paris and Transylvania. The game was developed by a small team of three located in Romania. However, Gibus looks and plays great and after a successful Kickstarter campaign, full voice acting was included with more than 70 different English-speaking actors. The game was also translated to 12 different languages as the Kickstarter campaign exceeded multiple stretch goals. Gibus is played from a third-person perspective featuring a point-and-click interface that resembles the coin from the Curse of Monkey Island. I finished the game on the Switch recently and loved the whole experience. The only issues I had was the final act was a bit dull and the fact that to get the most out of examined items you must use the look action multiple times until the icon changes to a closed eye. The game was received with mixed reviews by critics praising its humor, voice acting and art design and criticizing for its convoluted story and unsatisfactory ending. The studio has announced in 2021 a new game in the same universe titled Near Mates with a more fantasy based story and setting. That was all for my list of Cthulhu Mythos based adventure games. There are a lot of indie or fun game releases like The Infectious Madness of Dr. Decker, Chronicle of Innsmouth and the Cho Mythos games that I suggest you consider if you like these themes. I would love to know of any other titles and suggestions you may have in the comment section of this video. Do not forget to watch my other retrospectives on iconic franchises like King's Quest, Space Quest, Gabriel Knight and more. You can also find my two-hour documentary on the rise and fall of the genre. If you like the content of my channel, please consider supporting it by subscribing and turning on the notifications for it. You can also consider supporting me by becoming a member of my YouTube channel. There is one membership tier and you will have a lot of benefits like exclusive updates on upcoming videos, you get to watch each new video earlier, you get to decide the topic of upcoming videos and also member exclusive giveaways that will follow. We will have more adventure games videos soon. Thank you all for watching.